Okay. Um, have you ever been, you know, in one of these situations that uh, where you really wanted to get a video out there? Uh, you you really want something out there, and then you constantly get interrupted in doing it, and and other things interfere, and it's just so frustrating, you know. I I had this whole thing all figured out when I when I came home from work. I was just gonna make this video. Then I got a bunch of phone calls, you know, from from friends, from close friends, and. So uh, they kind of got all put back on the back burner. But I, I just felt I needed to make this video, and so I'm gonna, <laughs> God damn it, I'm gonna make it, okay? So this whole thing is um, about the Egyptian situation and our situation here in the United States. And what I wanted to get out there was Glenn Greenwald's latest article entitled the Egyptian mirror. This is an absolutely excellent article, and I don't, you know, I don't necessarily want to get in trouble here in, in terms of copyright issues and stuff like that. Uh, but it is so excellent that you should really read the entire thing in its entirety. And I'll sort of get started with that right now, and then I'll I'll post a link uh, a little bit later. Um, it's a very, very insightful article. So, okay. One of the most re revealing journalistic genres is the effort by establishment media outlets to explain to their American audiences why those other countries, usually in the Middle East, are so bad and awful and plagued by severe political and societal corruption. This morning, the New York Times has a classic entry as it unironically details how Egypt is a cesspool of oligarchical favoritism and self-dealing. The article focuses on Ahmed Ez, a close friend of Hosni Mubarak, um, Mubarak's son, who has exploited his political connections to corner much of the nation's steel, steel market, triggering growing resentment by the public. Along the way, we learn several other disturbing things about Egypt, including this. For many years, Mr. Ez has presented, represented the intersection of money, politics, and power. Public resentment at the wealth acquired by the politically powerful help propel the uprising already reshaping the contours of powers uh, on, the on the Nile. Hosni Mubarak's Egypt has long functioned as a state where wealth bought political power and political power bought great wealth. Now remember, this is a direct quote from a New York Times article. <laughs> kind of ironic if you think about the bigger picture. Can you believe that Hosni Mubarak's Egypt, private wealth translates into great political power and vice versa? What is it like? wonders the curious and concerned New York Times to live in a country like that. No wonder there is an uprising. How many American politicians with a national platform over the last 30 years have failed to convert their political standing into great personal wealth? Perhaps only those 
who began their political careers with great wealth. Ex-presidents and their wives and top aides are routinely lavished with many millions of dollars from media companies and other corporations for books, speeches, and other services. Obama really didn't even wait to become president to capitalize on this subject. While a large portion of ex-members of Congress and administration officials with any real power feed at the trowel of corporate largesse in exchange for peddling their influence. It would literally be impossible to list all of the top officials from both parties who have quickly converted their political influence into vast personal wealth over the past two decades. It would actually be much quicker to list the few that haven't. This is an article by Glenn Greenwald. And yes, of course, you know, the same thing is going on here. So I'm going to break this video up a little bit. I, I don't want to violate copyright in, in any sense, way or form, you know, it needs to get out there nevertheless. So part two will follow probably in a couple of days. And, and, uh, yeah. Uh, how ironic that the American media is now criticizing the corruption in Egypt. Um, well, they're not criticizing our own government, which has essentially fostered that entire corruption <laughs> and supported it all along. So. That's the essence of that article. Good night.